your heart to confess your love to your crush love or to ask your mom and dad to please, please, please let you go to a party, the answer might just be written in the stars. A lot of you have taken astrology tests or at least taken a quiz on BuzzFeed and know that sometimes this really seems like they know what they're talking about. Like you take those quizzes and they tell you that you're really cool and you're like, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> astrology is an ancient practice that unlike many religions has withstood time and continues to be used today whether those that use it believe in its divine abilities or not. There are many reasons that people use astrology to help them in their daily lives, whether it be to avoid people like the plague or to bring them closer to their lives. Some of those who use the divine practice may surprise you. The creator of the Eisner Extroversion and Emotionality Test defines it as the study that deals with the connections believed to exist between the positions of the stars and all that stuff. Um, and the relation to your birth, uh, your birth time in relation to your character, your development, your profession, marriage, and all your social relationships. The history of the zodiac begins in a year that precedes telescopes, Alexander the Great, and even written language. Craig Crossan, the author of two long-winded textbooks on astronomy, studies relationships between stars and all things space. In his article, The Ancient Circle of Animals, he writes about the first telescope, horoscope, a relic inscribed in a tablet in 410 BC. This might look a little different than what you're used to seeing today. A horoscope is a prediction of the future based on how celestial bodies were aligned at the time, either of your birth or the time the prediction was made. Crossan says the rise of this type of zodiac didn't come until many, many years later in third century AD, which is when people started really relying on them. But before horoscopes came astrology, passed along by word of mouth, a practice that started with the Babylonians in Mesopotamia and was carried to Greece, Rome, and Egypt over a few short centuries. Crossan reminds us the constellation figures were so prominent that they were literally woven into the fabric of the Greek millennium with their myths and epics. So you've probably read stories about like Taurus the bull, like beating people up because they were so established by then that the people who wrote Greek myths and legends were like, we're going to take these figures and put them into our stories because everyone already knows them. He also explains the reason that all of the signs except for Libra and her scales are animals because it was way easier to translate the names of animals rather than like religious figures because no one could write things down and there were a lot of language barriers, so it was easier to like point to a goat and say like, goat than to try to explain what like the god of whatever, I don't know, the god of kindness is. Alexander Gerstein, a Russian astronomer, said research about the origin of literally everything grows so fast that in 1965 almost everyone believed astrology originated with the Greeks, when in actuality it did originate in Babylonia with the Mesopotamia. The accuracy of astrology is widely disputed among scientists and classmates, and even the most stubborn astrologers have to admit a little defeat sometimes. In 1996, an empirical study of 190 college students by David Clark and his colleagues, who are all professors of psychology, found no significant correlation between birth, time of birth, and personality. But its mere existence, the existence of the study, proves that some people are like kind of doubting it. They're thinking, well, like it could be true. Probably not, <laughs> but they like it could be true. However, within an analysis of their data, they did mention a separate study that did find a correlation between personality and birth time, but only if the birth was natural. Um, it couldn't have been a C-section and not induced labor. So. James Evan writes a summary of Ptolemy, a renowned mathematician, astronomer, and geographer, and his work Tetrabiblos, written in 2nd century BC about his belief in astrology. Many scientists made claims in the early 19th century that he had never written the book to say the reputability, reputability of his other scientific works. And this was despite the fact that astrology during his time was really widely believed by like Aristotle and like a bunch of famous philosophers, but everyone was like, well, he believed it, like how could his studies on geography be right, which is a little strange. Ptolemy said, Ptolemy said that while astrology certainly wasn't useful, especially if it was true because you can't
can't change fate. He believed that if you could look to the stars and know what was going to happen, that you could soften the blow, hypothetically. While you may associate a belief in predictions of the future for people who are a little out of their mind, it might surprise you to hear who has used astrology and the reasons behind it. Just as citizens began to look to astrology during the fall of Rome, many Americans turned to the practice in the 50s and 60s during the midst of the civil rights movement and the Vietnam War, and in the 80s during the AIDS epidemic and the resurgence of the war on drugs. Anthony Grafton's paper, Starry Messengers, recent work in the history of Western astrology, gives a look at the people who use astrology in their lives. Grafton is a professor of history at Princeton and a recipient of the Balzan Prize. It may surprise you that Ronald Reagan, the 40th present president of the United States, was not only a believer in astrology, but had hired his own professional astrologer, Joan Quigley. Joan served the Reagans for seven years during, her pre during his presidency and advised many decisions, from the timing of court hearings to the timing of personal meetings. Many other affluent Americans also turned to astrology during that time period where they met for anywhere from high rises to small business offices, which is a little different than that most people would think, like a creepy shop. Today, astrology takes on many shapes and forms and predicting the future of relationships to natural disasters. While astrologers sometimes use basic information, such as associating your zodiac with certain personality traits, some take it much deeper into the cosmos. You may have heard the term birth chart in memes or quizzes, and it's just like what it sounds. Your birth chart, this is mine, oh, I, don't, I don't understand it, is a comp compilation of the relationships of all the celestial bodies and your time of birth. While this might look a little confusing to you and me, a refined astrologer will be able to tell you that this chart means that I'm Capricorn, and I'm stubborn, and I'm quick-witted, and I'm practical, among many, many other very detailed descriptions. Bianca Bosker, a journalist and best-selling author, interviewed the witch Juliet Diaz in her article, The Witching Hour, in March of this year. While Juliet is not an astrologer, her practice of witchcraft is still profitable to her today because of the many people who believe in her ability to take alternative paths to get things done. Similar to Reagan's time, there is a lot of turmoil occurring, and even as Ptolemy suggested, in 2nd century BC, people often turn to astrology and the occult when they're feeling desperate and need to escape. To show just how many people are using witchcraft, Bianca cites a 2014 Pew Research Center report on the United States adult population. She found that the number of pagans and witches, just like that little, little sliver, is actually 730,000 people in the United States. And that's around the same number as Christian Unitarians, which is just like a little section of Christians. <laughs> as you can see, astrology is widely used today by many different people just as it was centuries ago before the Babylonians could even write about it. I hope that you've learned a little bit about the history and uses of astrology, and now you know a fun fact about Ronald Reagan that you can share with random people. Thank you.